Hi everyone. Hello, Marek. Hello. So we are live. Uh, welcome uh, everyone. Thank you for joining the 26th live stream of the Music Hack Space. And we are streaming today from London, from North London and South London. Um, so with Marek Bereza. Marek is uh, an inventor, a designer, a coder, a hacker. If uh, even the dictionary, there was a page for music hacker, I think there would be a photo of Marek because you're involved in every single aspect. You're, you're the poster man for music hacker. Um, and uh, and so today you've prepared a presentation of, of the range of works, some of the work you 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 are you have been working on. Um, you were also um uh, presenting nine years ago you were one of the very first to come and present your work at the time you had uh, showed guitar pedals that you built as well as uh, as a guitar uh, that you made when you were a teenager so um yeah it's great to have you how are you yeah. doing yeah yeah i'm good thanks yeah thanks for the extremely flattering intro um yeah it means a lot coming from you so yeah thanks a lot. oh well and, and we're in your studio so i guess i guess we can see uh, we can see oh, everything yeah. that surrounds you is full of equipment yeah, complete mess so, um, yeah something like that great well you've prepared a presentation so i'm, I'm going to to uh, invite you to do that if you're ready i'm going to bring it up yeah sure. uh, and we have uh carl and arthur that says hi hello hey. guys how you doing thanks for, thanks for watching i'm cool. gonna bring it up and uh and i'm going to disappear i'm going to leave it to you and uh, everyone if you have questions if there's anything that uh, captures your attention please uh, put in the comments and uh, we will answer or uh, marek will answer them as, as soon as he can see them or yeah. I, would have it. I can't see anything except for my presentation so right so i will bring them up at the end but don't Ooh. hesitate to to to, to ask no, questions no. you can button I, I don't mind um all right uh what's i gonna say can you see my screen yes your screen is up okay should i start then yeah uh ollie is saying that your audio is a bit quiet so maybe oh. increase the gain a little bit yeah thank you ollie mayday mayday maybe that's better i hope it's better yeah i think yeah maybe a little bit more okay hello that hello. Really, yeah yeah sorry my, yeah. my computer's also um uh melting the fans going crazy but um, it's just everything's running at the same time okay all right so, over to you mark um yeah um so first of all i just want to say a little bit of an intro of like where how i got to where uh where i am i guess um and as um john baptiste said uh, it started with making guitar pedals and and basically when when i was younger <clears throat> I saw all these um, guitar pedals in, in the window in, in like Denmark Street or whatever and, and sort of coveted them, obviously couldn't afford them. So um, I started uh, making them with uh, circuit diagrams originally from books um, and um, yeah, really enjoyed doing it. Um, and that, that's, that was sort of my gateway into like music uh, tech stuff or whatever. Um, and it, it turned out um, I'm also left-handed, and when when I was very young, um, I started playing the guitar and didn't really realize you're supposed to like swap the strings if you're left-handed. So it started me off um, wanting to make a guitar, and um, this is sort of like I think maybe when I was like 22, 23, I made this guitar, um, uh, which is like perfect for me. It doesn't have knobs on it, which I constantly used to turn by accident playing right-handed guitars. Um, uh, and I yeah really got into the sort of whole wood woodworking thing. I made a bass guitar as well, um, which sadly I, I played a gig with some friends and managed to leave it on the bus. But um, but I remember my laptop, which I guess says a lot about me. Um, this is the the shot of the the head on the bass that I really like. Um, this is a a shot from the garage uh, where I was sort of shaping the back. Um, using a string vest to protect the, the surface of the thing is very useful. Um, and then, yeah, basically when I got to, I mean, obviously I did that guitar later, but um, when I got to sort of university time, I decided I wanted to learn computers because um, lots of music software was coming out. And I, I, I love these uh, sort of sampler boxes and reverb units and stuff like that. And it's just really, um, 
uh, you know, totally out of reach, totally unaffordable. But with the computer, there were the sort of beginnings of being able to to make, um, well, basically use computers instead of having all these boxes. So I was really into that. And I also really um, wanted to understand how a computer works, like basically from the uh, the very transistors all the way up to the operating system. And, and what they should have done is just given me this book. It's called Computer Organization and Design, um, or Patterson and Hennessy, I think a lot of people call it. And it basically just tells you everything about how a computer works. And I really wish I just read that and didn't go to university because they, they didn't really teach a lot of fun stuff. And I don't think I, I really sort of managed to apply very much of it. Um, in, in my first year, I made my first synthesizer, which um, I had to do in Java, which is a, a terrible language to ever have to write audio software in. But um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I got obsessed when I was younger with this app called uh, Sound Edit, which um, you can really sort of select audio and manipulate it as if it was text. It even used the same color for highlighting the the uh, audio as uh, you would have in a um, like a text file and um, I just I really love this interaction like later on I found out that the person who designed it was a really um, accomplished uh, in um, interaction designer and uh, as, as part of my sort of um, third year thesis um, sort of dissertation project I, I sort of made a, a clone of it um which was um pretty pretty awful but I, I did learn so much whilst doing it and then basically throughout the years i made made little silly um you know vst plugins and stuff um but i really um what one thing i really liked i guess it's down to the the sort of music i was into when i was like 17 18 was uh samplers and at the time it was really difficult to um get um cheap or free or cracked sampler software so i i decided i would make my own and this this is like a, i don't know how old this screenshot is but it's um yeah it's pretty pretty dated and this this was like a sampler that i i sort of made and just found it extremely complicated and clumsy and all i wanted to do was just sample a sound really quickly and then play it back so uh, eventually i came to this thing called capture which um which i made which basically it turns your computer keyboard into um every key on the computer keyboard will act as a recording button if it's in the record mode or a, or a trigger button if it's in the play mode so um as you press the key down it starts recording when you let go it stops recording then you press it again um you get the sound back and i, I really like the the sort of immediacy of it, uh, immediacy of it and and uh, all the stuff that, that that sort of affords. And you can really, you can basically play with it. And that's that's really important, making a musical instrument, being able to play with it and have fun. Um, so I actually developed this into an audio visual version. So when you put your finger down, it would record a bit of video as well as a bit of audio. Um, and then you could sequence that, you know, in, in Logic or, I, I mean, I didn't have Ableton at the time. Um, uh, I don't have a screenshot of, program but this is like a video that I made with it um, so I, I'd recorded all these small bits and pieces of hitting a drum or piano or a guitar and then afterwards I could just make a bit of music with it and it had these um, you could put it into different modes to decide whether to sort of show three at a time or four at a time or nine at a time um, and I really like watching things like this there's loads of people who've made videos like this where you see the sound when you hear the sound and uh yeah it's just a really nice feeling like you sort of feel the music as well as hear it <clears throat> um yeah so that's that um and then basically the the iphone came out i guess is talking like 2000 i made this in 2009 i think um sample toy which is this thing where you can it's again the idea of like sort of playing with sound and making it fun you could just basically record a bit of audio and then um touch the screen to play it back at different speeds and loop it and stuff um um uh yeah that was like my first sort of commercial foray into um sampling and audio software um uh so basically i stopped doing that pretty pretty quickly i don't really know why because it, it was quite successful 
and um, went into like doing um, sort of creative coding stuff, uh, like projection mapping and stuff like that. And and it sort of culminated in this video. I'm not going to play any sound from it, but basically using um, cameras to look at the band on stage and then um, doing some visuals all around um, the wall well, behind the band uh, in this case. Um, so you can see these sort of flaring out things so i just basically did the the graphic stuff and it was um it was really easy because it was well it was all in black and white which made it really easy and um at really really low res um i think it was like five days work or something like that but um, yeah it was pretty fun shame about the music um and then um i went to work at apple and um basically i, I was a a designer there and you know before i was mostly a a programmer i had studied industrial design but um uh yeah basically really um uh properly learn how to design software to be super usable and um uh, that really helped with what would be next and like basically i came back from apple um and i, I did go back into the freelancing world of making you know, add some music videos and stuff. But um, I decided also that I wanted to do my own music stuff, music app and stuff like that. Um, I tried tried a bunch of things, but music app was the thing that I thought oh, I can actually do that. Um, so I went to the drawing board and uh, came up with this app called Koala, which um, took about three months to develop in the end, uh, but it's just done done really well. I've got like a little sort of short video of how it works maybe I'll skip through a few bits sampler. sample sequence and perform tracks in a flash with its straightforward interface koala is focused on keeping you in the flow of music making to get started yeah maybe I'll skip that um but um yeah basically it's a it's a sampler app it's kind of like an evolution of that original capture thing um and one thing I did that was quite nice was um every time I recompiled it and ran it for testing, I would take a screenshot and basically made this video where you can see the user interface every time, every time it's, um, every time I recompiled it. So you can see things sort of moving around and, and evolving and my decisions changing and stuff like that. It did draw a um, huge amount of pictures to actually design the layout of the interface. And it did do a lot of uh, sort of user testing with, basically with drawings um but um yeah a lot of the unresolved stuff did get resolved in code which is not not that good but um yeah it got there in the end and then this is yeah this is like all the drawings that i did so initially i called it samploid and wrote it in cyrillic it's like really really embarrassing beats um yeah there's like a bunch of um bunch of things in there um lots of weird icons and stuff um but yeah, so that that was Koala, and then really recently I launched it um, on Android. Um, I got bullied into it. The users were um, uh, the people. Everyone really wanted it on Android, basically. So I made this video. When I launched it. Yeah, I don't know if I've explained Koala very well, but um, yeah, it's a sampler app. It's on the phone. Um, if um, if anyone wants it, um, put a comment in the YouTube or whatever, and I'll send you a link. Um, so the the way that I built all this stuff is I rather than using Juice or one of these frameworks for like building music software, I decided to build my own one, which is probably not a very good idea. Um, uh, but the one thing that I built into it is to allow uh, live coding in C++. So for this bit, I'm going to do a demonstration, um, a live demo of C++ coding on the internet. Um, hang on. Get Xcode and run this. Make the writing big. 
so usually what I would do rather than sort of massive program is 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 do a series of sketches um uh so for instance this this was me trying to work on um on a keyboard for an app that I'm working on at the moment um so it's 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 not the whole program it's just a bit and this is a c plus plus program with my um my m z g l program um library running in it and you know i can do change the color of a thing like if i change the black keys to be more red nope yeah there you go stuff like that or you can just sort of directly draw things so um down here i can say g dot draw uh rect um 100 100 100 100 so that'll draw a rectangle um at coordinates 100 100 um with a size of 100 100 and then you can say set color like you know, um, make it flash or something with the light. I guess it's quite small up in that corner, so I can make it a lot bigger. Um, yeah, so there you go. Live coding. There it is. Um, and it's it's the most helpful thing when, when trying to make interfaces and, and trying to play with stuff. You find sort of happy accidents when you, when you can do this and you don't have to do the whole um, sort of compile and run uh thing uh so yeah that's that's that um uh where are we oh yeah this is a, another thing that i found very recently is is doing um basically writing c plus plus in a system like that um and then um exporting it to the web using this thing called m um which it's been around for quite a long time but i'm very new to it um so i've made this example um if anyone ever wants to try and do the same thing it's like a github repository um that explains how to get it working uh, mostly as a reminder for myself um because I, I usually forget things about this and this is yeah working in a browser i don't know can can you hear that i can't hear it yes marek we're gonna hear it oh excellent that's good um yeah so that's that's that um uh sorry where am i um so yeah sorry this program um uh, i'm gonna sort of tie these things in a little bit um so when i made that it it sort of um the the demo uses um you know, physical modeling. And I, I really got into physical modeling, I think mostly from listening to music hack space things. So I made this, um, and also because of lockdown, I was feeling quite depressed and I got really into gong baths. So I made this, um, this sort of like web audio, web GL gong bath thing where you can hit these series of gongs. Again, I can't hear it. So hopefully you can hear it. If you can hear the last one. Um, and depending on where you hit the gong, you hear different, different sort of tonalities. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's that. And that was built using this sort of live coding thing, which is something I'm going to show um, uh, shortly. Um, oh yeah, and I yeah, basically I also got into hardware. Hardware's not really my main thing, but. Um, it started with this project where we had to turn uh, printers and scanners and photocopies and floppy disks and modems into things that made sound. Um, and I found just by basically making, um, let's say, playing some music into a hi-fi amplifier and taking the wires that should go to a speaker and then like plugging them into a motor, you could make um, make the motor make, make some sounds. Um, uh, and then I worked out you can basically make a sort of very crude square wave oscillator with uh, with a with an Arduino to do the same thing and MIDI control it. So th this was like an initial test um, for the video. Um, and 
yeah, again, I, I can't do it, so hopefully it can go through. Um, and, and to do, do all this, we made, uh, we had someone make us a custom circuit board, which is sort of, you can program it like an Arduino. It's got this Atmel chip, which is the same one that they put in the Arduino. So it was really, it was really quite straightforward to do that. Um, uh, and yeah, this is the final video. Um, I'll just skip to where it's playing. So it's all controlled with this sort of like super Swiss Army knife Arduino thing. Uh, and the, the code is, is extremely um, naive. The oscillators are just um, um, l reading the microseconds since they were turned on and deciding whether to, to switch on or off. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, and then, yeah, from there, starting to try and make actual music with um, Teensy, well, with Arduinos, there's a board called a Teensy, which is like an Arduino. I think it's, it's pretty much the same price, um, but it's a lot more powerful. Um, uh, I, and when it was, I think it was like 72 megahertz, I made this um, this thing, which is what you can see on the screen. I can probably just play the video of that. Or maybe I can play both at the same time. That's crazy. doing it justice but um uh yeah basically running dsp on like uh, very cheap general purpose chips um uh got me quite excited and then very recently well about a year ago uh the, the teensy people brought out a teensy that's 600 megahertz which is like you know uh a crap phone basically so you can do uh, a lot more dsp power than than something like this um and yeah basically Oh, I, I need to show the inside guts of this synthesizer. So it's basically just um, lots of sellotape. There's no blue tech. I've evolved from blue tech. Um, lots of um, uh, yeah things sort of uh, jam packed together. And like I think inside there is a capacitor. And you know it's like really crudely done. Um, one thing that's really nice about it is it it's got a built-in speaker. Uh, and a battery that's rechargeable. And, and from eBay, you can get these things. If you type in USB speaker into eBay and, and sort by price, this is the bottom price. And uh, the battery is enough to power the Teensy and the amplifier for the speaker um, for like a good hour or two or something like that. So if you're doing like a, a little mini hack project, these are, these are amazing. Um, I mean, they sound terrible, but that you can hear them um so uh yeah um basically i got into making circuit boards um because um you know wires going all over the place i think i've got got a few here so i made um this one which is supposed to be sort of like a general purpose thing i guess um to run um yeah, my, my audio code on it. Um, and it was kind of cool, but it was a bit difficult to to use. And it's just not nearly as fast as the Teensy. So I made this uh, this new board, which accepts a Teensy 4.0 here. And um, it's got like, um, you know, audio stereo in and out and stuff like that with a good DAC. Um, and I've uh, made like a sort of Euro rack version, which um, uh, it, it's starting to work. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty hot off the press um this is the the circuit diagram i use this program called KiCad, um and then you, you kind of lay out everything with um um with KiCad, and then you just send it off to china and it costs like five dollars um plus postage and they'd send you a circuit board back in in a week it's pretty amazing uh, and it's all stuff that you know all of this uh, it's like copy and pasted off the internet off uh, various different people's websites um, uh, like there's a really good open source community around it um, and yeah this is um, basically a teensy the sort of precursor to this thing uh, running the the gong um, gong software that I, I showed that was working in the web 
um, but as a sort of standalone physical thing. So it's, it's really quite capable. Um, st sorry, the, the video is so bad. Uh, I tried to get it working again, but that's what happens when you make things out of um, cardboard boxes. Um, they, they don't seem to um, withstand the test of time. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the the entirety of the talk that I was going to do. Um, I was going to show you how to make a um, whoa, Jean Baptiste, are you there? No. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I did promise to make a drum machine, um, which I'm going to do. All right. Okay. So, are you going to use a screen and share the screen for that? I'm g I'm going to share a screen. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Cool. Just for I'd um, warn you. So, um, I'm going to show you how to make a drum machine using live coding C plus plus and then put it on a Teensy. Um, it's not a very good drum machine. Um, because I, I want to try and explain it in sort of ten minutes or less. Um, or actually program it in 10 minutes or less. Um, so I'll, I'll see if hopefully it's not too boring, but maybe you'll find something in this. So um, to do this, you need to get this thing called CPP Sketch, which is my um, my sort of library for uh, live coding in C++. And you can get it from from uh, GitHub. It's um, you probably got it, but that's the, the URL. Um, uh, and yeah, you need to clone it into a folder. Um, I don't know if this is uh, visible. Um, so you download it by typing git clone and putting that URL, and then you have to CD into the folder. And then if you follow the instructions, uh, it will tell you you have to do this git submodule thing to get um, something called RT audio, which um, lets your computer make audio out of the speakers. Um, uh, and then we're going to just basically destroy the um, example and turn it into our own. So if I just run this, um, I have to make it first, only takes a second. And then run it. Marek, that's super loud. Super loud. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Um, hmm. Uh, oh dear. Uh, I don't know how I can demo this without hearing it. Um, hello? You know, I suppose we can... Uh, uh, Warn everybody that it's going to be loud, uh, but you, you can't speak over it because you, you won't be heard. Oh yeah, I can that. turn it. I can turn it down, but I can't actually hear it to um to. Oh, you to can't hear it. it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to think how I can how I can do that, um, or why I can't hear anything. Um, uh, oh dear. I can hear right. something. Right. We are. We're using complex routing uh, for audio um, in preparation for this for this live stream. So you have to uh, excuse us for the lack of preparation on this. But um... yeah, exactly. Atta was just joined us. He was here uh, a few weeks ago, and he had he says hi, uh, and he had Hello. amazing solutions for this. So um, <laughs> I don't know if you can help us through the comments. Um, ah, I do know what it is. I think it might um, cause a bit of trouble, but we'll see. Uh, Multi-output device. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I think this is going to work now. Um, All right. I'll turn it down before um, before continuing. Yes, I'll tell you, loop back and loop back seems pretty loop more sophisticated okay. than black hole. Um, okay, 0.02. Okay, 
see what happens when I run this. Now. Okay, that's quite loud. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Um, Oli has a suggestion on the sound. Pardon? Uh, Oli has a suggestion on the sound to multiply the, the out gain by 0.1. Uh, it's multiplied by 0.02. Okay. At the moment. <laughs> I just turned it down. Um, uh, I've got a feeling it's not going to work. Um, uh, how could I do this instead? Um, I can make it come out of my computer speakers and we use the microphone. That, that could work. That. Okay. Um, so, ah, okay. That's very quiet. Can you hear it? Yeah, we can, we can hear it, but it's, it's yeah, but, but it's fine. I, th I think as, as a. Hang on, As a I can plug of the, sound, the computer yes. into the sound card. Oh my god. It's gonna blow up. Right, so in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna make an announcement. So uh, next uh, Thursday, we have Oli Lock in the art, the ball. We've branched out uh, iPlug to make iPlug 2, and he has some interesting uh, announcements to make, I understand. Uh, and he's been kind to join us tonight, so he's around and commented so far. Uh, and it's going to be the last live stream until September. We're gonna take a break of the live streams uh, after, after receiving Oli. And we'll start on 7th of September with Andrew Lego, who has been with us as well and is the, the designer of uh, the most successful guitar, the Roland guitar. is going to be there on September 7th. So if Mark is just ready and back, I will know. Well, uh, what are the announcements? Well, we will have some fantastic workshops starting in September as well, covering Max, covering uh, DIY electronics uh, and, and a range of um, and a range of other things uh, and building them up all the way through the year. So if you're thinking about uh, getting a university degree uh, and and you know picked on Ma what Marek said about going to study to uni, I mean maybe you can not go and and just um, attend our workshops instead. Because that was a big promotion. Uh, I hope you. <laughs> Marek, how's it going? Um, it's uh, it's going like pretty badly, I'd say. Um, yeah. Um, let me. Um, I still need a moment. Can you think of? All right, uh, all right. Well, okay. I'm gonna think about something. How about if you're watching now? How about you ask us some questions so we can at least have some uh, some engagement and you, and you don't go away. We want we want you to hear what's following. Uh, I've I've made some notes during Marek's um, talk and, and I have a lot of questions, especially what he worked on at Apple, um, <laughs> yeah. which uh, I don't know how much you can share about. <laughs> um, I was very impressed that it took only three months to build the Koala assembler as well. So I wanted to know a bit more about this. I also want to hear from Marek later what his advices are to people who aspire to become Ojo developers, because he took a route that's pretty unique. He didn't chose a route of going to work for one of his established company doing audio stuff, but he went straight to, to build his own career doing his own thing. Uh, yeah, and, Apple, I guess. Yeah, well, well, Apple was when you were not working on the on the audio application there, unless I'm mistaken. But um, so yeah, also very interested to hear more about the MZGL. Uh, project, which is a live coding environment in which um, Marek is, is giving us his live demo now, uh, and what plans there's for it. I, I did share on the comments the GitHub address for CPP Sketch. Um, I don't know if that's the entire um, MZGL. Uh, no, uh, no, stuff. It's, not. it's not. Yeah. So yeah. Just, yeah, I just wanted to get more information about that. So if people want to get access to it, is there a way to to, to get to get into that? So I would say it's, it's really similar to um, Open Frameworks. It's it's a and, and maybe a little bit similar to Juice, but it's it's much simpler 
um i've taken quite a lot of stuff out like there's there's loads of stuff in open frameworks is a, si a similar tool um it sort of lets you draw pictures um uh with code which is um and you basically using your graphics card quite heavily whereas i think i think for the most part juice tends to um draw things on the cpu a lot more i i'm, I'm no expert so I, I don't really know um but uh yeah open frameworks lets you write uh iphone apps as well android apps and stuff like that um uh let me think yeah, so MZGL is just like a sort of pared down vo version of Open Frameworks or Cinder is another one. Um, and it also has this live coding thing, but the CPP sketch also works in Open Frameworks. So you can do that sort of um, uh, typing and then every time you press save, it, it reloads the the program um, in Open Frameworks. And I, I would say it's, it's a totally valid thing. I think to make um, iPhone apps these days, People are really into the um, the sort of the plugin architecture that they've got there now, which is it's like uh, Audio Units version three, um, and it doesn't really help with that so much um, because oh, um, Open Frameworks doesn't help so much with that because it um, I don't think it really supports it and you'd have to write that yourself. But it's not it's not too terrible. I mean, but then also there is yeah, there's Juice as another option. Uh, iPlug as well, iPlug 2, uh, seem, seems to be pretty exciting and you can do lots of um, uh, GL like um, GPU bound drawings so you get the full sort of acceleration there. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't really know what, what else mine does that other ones don't do, it's just, it's just I, I did it myself and I understand all the ins and outs of it and um, it was it was a learning process to do it as well. I sort of built it in parallel with with Koala, so um, it was good. And I'm still using it. I've made a bunch more stuff with it, um, and it's sort of growing slowly. Um, I I don't think I want to burden the world with another um, API, though. To be honest, there's there's too many out there already. Like, um, uh, but I think I yeah I don't know. Um, I do sort of. You know, like I think CPP Sketch has got a few bits and pieces of of MZGL inside it. But um, as time goes on, I just you know I, I wrote a whole system for like files and directories. Um, you know, like how to list directories and writing files and all this sort of stuff. And then uh, I just deleted it because um, you know th there's a library called Boost which is really really good in C plus plus for doing all of that. So. Um, I got a good learning experience, but at the same time, I can't write it as well as the people who write the, the sort of really pro-grade libraries. So I end up taking out quite a lot of stuff. And it, it's also um, OpenGL only. So these these days on Apple platforms, Metal is the graphics pre programming environment of choice. And they've even phased out. They're trying to get rid of OpenGL. So I may have sort of shot myself in the foot. Um, uh yeah, so it's okay. It's just like a, a thing uh, that I made. And maybe I should not actually reference it as a name because, yeah, it's not as exciting as it sounds. Okay, well, uh, Carl has a question for you. I don't know if you sh see your screen, but I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to read it for you. Uh, I'm wondering how much you have to rely on the technology of dating or does stuff you make allow it to live on old and new gadgets? Um, so... I don't know, um, like, I think the the way that I've tended to write stuff is, is so so that it will work on old stuff. And actually, sort of, I'm hoping that, that technology won't update too fast because it'll start breaking some of the stuff that I've already got. Um, but, uh, yeah, see, it seems like uh, technology, well, at least phones and, you know, microcontroller things are at a stage where... Um, you can kind of do whatever you want on them, which is which is really nice. Um, like I don't I don't really do like any machine learningy stuff, which um, which is quite demanding. But um, yeah, I don't know if that answered the question. Maybe. Well, there was there was another part of the question that I missed, um, uh, and Carl was wondering if mobile stuff for iOS and Android, how is it creating apps and instruments for these devices? So. Um,
How is it creating apps and instruments for these devices? Um, I, I think, like, I guess the, the way I've done it is it's always uh, been something that can run anywhere. So, you know, apps, um, iPhones and Android phones, they do have their, their sort of benefits. I think that the biggest benefit is that they're really small and you can put them in your pocket and they run on batteries and they've got their own screen. Uh, so you, you've got so much to play with already there. And like situationally, as a designer, you can think like, uh, for instance, with Koala, it's like um, it's the perfect thing for going and field sampling or whatever, because um, it can come with you. Whereas if you had something that you had to plug into the wall, it's a different different question. So um, but uh, I, I do like to try and make things that will work in in lots of different modalities. I think it's tricky to design things like that and you have to. You have to sort of adapt them. I, I once I made like um, a sort of drum machine thing that was a phone app, and then it also got put into kind of like a big multi-touch table thing. And then uh, once upon a time, it also got put into kind of like installation where you'd like wave your hands, but it was the same sort of underlying code at the bottom. And I do like to try and make sure that if I make something, I'm not like um, I, I won't use the sort of standard. Let's say iPhone Apple APIs because I, I'm worried that if I want to like you know make the project persist beyond Apple or if I want to move it to something else or um, I, I know it's like it makes it a lot more of a hassle for me but that's just that's just me yeah that, Carl says that it makes sense um, okay that's good so yeah uh, Dan has, has a comment to make. He says the world would totally appreciate an API run CPP sketch. So, um, I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. he can elaborate on that. Um, yeah. th there's a few already, but uh, mm -hmm. I, what I've actually, do you um, think? I haven't made. Um, it actually works on uh, Linux as well now. It doesn't work on Windows. I've been trying to to get it working. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not really an API. It's basically like a folder with some examples of how to use it. Um, I should probably explain it a bit better, like you know, in the documentation. But it's also, it's made in a really crude way. It's not. Um, it's not doing any sort of clever things under the hood. It's literally like. Um, uh, it keeps making a really small program and putting it into your, into your program. Um, in using a uh, dynamic libraries kind of like a plugin uh like a vst plugin it just like recompiles the plugin and puts it back into your code um and there's a, basically a a silly feature of uh clang the compiler um ah nice um well. uh, clang the compiler that um let, lets you um do it really quickly you know that when i was recompiling with that demo it's like um half a second which is it's definitely noticeable and it, it sort of irritates me when i'm changing a number from like 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 and i have to wait for half a second i mean you know before i made this i would have to do that and wait wait for ages and you know there's there's ways around that you can have uis with sliders like debug uis um w which are great but they they don't sort of uh, allow for everything you can't let's say um try and listen to what a linear curve sounds like versus um you know, a, a square root curve or like, you, you know, um, you'd have to sort of think about it a bit more with, with the sort of live coding, you can sort of feel it a little bit better. So, yeah. And um, well, if, if I may take the things in a different direction, uh, I mean, we, we've seen an overview of your, of your career, which um, looks like you're 50 years old because you've done so many stuff, uh, but, um, but you're not, you're much younger. Um, and, and there's, there's something very interesting. You, you spent two years at Apple, you said pretty much nothing. And you don't have to, you know, to spill any beans about mm -hmm. what you worked on. Some of it's probably not yet in the market, I, I imagine. But, um, but what, what did you've learned in terms of the design? And, and I think, you know, the, the kind of the career um, that, that you've built, maybe the advice that you can give to, to, uh, to aspiring uh, uh, developers or, or, you know, any role that you could have in, in mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. uh, in the music industry you know what did you learn when you were there that you didn't know before yeah well i would say one thing that i learned that i just found really lovely and and probably if there's anyone apple listening to this they probably maybe disagree with me i don't know but um i really like the the sort of persistence and the the sort of uh 
not giving up until you find the right answer uh, and really just sort of um yeah not not making do with like a half uh sort of halfway thing um just attention to every single bit of detail and like what is the best solution for let's say where do we put the button or um do we have a button or you know etc like that and i I, re- I really like that attitude and it was um you know that it was uh everyone was very humble as well uh for, for for the most part um and you know anyone could sort of uh raise a point which was which is really good there's no sort of skeletons there's no um uh sort of things left unsaid um uh and i i really like that environment i mean i pretty much work by myself um but uh i i do have this feeling um i guess it, it sort of varies depending on how important i think it is like that i just i will get the um the right answer or the right the right design for for the thing that i'm working on like i won't uh let myself do a sort of half ass thing unless it's like a boring feature or something if i'm doing it because i've been nagged for for ages by 14 year olds on forums <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the beauty of having a lot of a uh, lot of customers, I suppose. Um, only as a question uh, about the gong synthesis, and um, so I'm not sure what explaining oh, yeah. to that means. But I, I do have a question, maybe to narrow it down. Uh, you say it was built with your with your engine, so it's built in C plus plus and it runs yeah. in the browser. What are the advantages of using C plus uh, plus as opposed to I don't know Web Audio or uh, with the HTML5. Um, I think it's more my preference. Like I've got, I've got this real problem where I, I, I can't use pure data because I just don't, I don't understand boxes and lines. I can't get my head around it. So I have to see lines of code, and I think I've just used C plus plus for so long now. It, 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 I prefer to. <laughs> it's probably faster for me to write something, you know, in C plus plus, and then convert it to JavaScript than just to do it in JavaScript. And they, I think the language has got um, a lot more fun now. You can do a lot, lot more sort of um, uh, sort of clever things that you won't be weren't able to before. And the the sort of um, the sort of built in functionality is is really quite quite good. Um, and yeah, the 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 gong the gong algorithm it's like it's super simple. And I found it just just by like exploring things by live coding with that thing. Um, it's sort of like car plus strong. Um, so basically a series of delay lines um, running in parallel. Uh, and then they're, they're tuned to, you know, slightly off harmonic tunings. Um, I think I found like some sort of spiritual healing technical book on the Internet, which had like um, frequency, basically harmonic ratios of, of a gong. Uh, and I put those in. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll leave it with that. But what they do is they... Um, they obviously feed back on themselves, and that's the carpal strong. But then they also feed back; they mix themselves together, and then feed back into the whole thing in a in a small way to get a sort of sympathetic resonance. And then, instead of using noise as an exciter, I just sample a uh, thump on a table, and then to get a different position of um, whether you're hitting in the middle of the gong or the outside of the gong. All I do is I I pitch that sample, or pl- I play it back faster or slower. And that just excites different harmonics in the um, in in that in that sort of feedback network. I don't know why it does it, um, but I I don't care. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just it's basically just some delays and and the sound of me knocking on the table, p- playing back at different speeds, um, and it's just it's amazing how realistic things like that can sound just with some de- you know it's not even the sort of 2d waveguide synthesis stuff it's like super super basic i mean it doesn't sound since making it i've listened to a lot of gongs i'm like oh it sounds nothing like a gong but but uh, it still sounds nice but it's not um you get all these amazing sort of shimmers and like um sort of noisy washing noises and stuff um that uh yeah i guess with more advanced techniques maybe it's possible but i don't really know Right, and, and for those who don't know about uh, Calculus Strong, Calculus Strong is uh, one of the first algorithm uh, to do physical models, so it modulates the sound of, of a string. And there's plenty of, of, uh, of code uh, out there actually available to, to 
to, to replicate that algorithm, but obviously you went much further uh, into this project. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, is there any chance to resurrect your, your life coding or are you giving up? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try one, one more thing. One more thing. Um, it, right. I have to warn everyone it might make a noise, but we'll see. Okay. Okay, I can't hear anything. Can you hear anything? No, not yet, no. So be warned, okay. everybody, the sound may... No, no, it's, it, it won't make a sound now. I mean, it's it's done, it's... Oh, no. Yeah? No, no. No. Okay. I think it, I think it's dead in the water. Okay, that's that's okay. I'm sorry. I'll put the um I'll put the code online. Um, well, I can, you know what? I can actually just play it off the Teensy so you can hear it. Um, yeah, why don't uh, you try that? Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, so I did. I did want to talk a little bit about the yeah the one, well, not really much to talk about, but the uh, Teensy. 4.0 it's just it's absolutely amazing it's it's um it's so powerful um and and like my demo doesn't really do it justice the drum machine was kind of like a a super mario type um drum machine that's like a what you call it procedural so it's it's just um uh you know playing um random stuff oh here we go uh i can maybe share So yeah, that's that. So um, the the um, the tiny um, circuit board was a Teensy. Yeah. And then you had uh, four knobs. Why it's very small. Yeah. So this is a Teensy, and you you don't need a, a deck um, like a digital to audio a converter or an audio board or anything like that. You just get a um, oh yeah over here a uh, a capacitor. It's like a 10 microfarad capacitor and you connect it to I think it's like pin 12 or something um, and then connect that I basically got it wired up to a, a jack that's plugged into speaker like that super simple and then if you do want to like control it with stuff you can you know it's like a, if you do a basic tutorial on on teensies or whatever this is just like some um, sorry it's really difficult to show um, but just some pots um, attached to wires attached to the deck yeah, to the the sort of analog inputs of of the Teensy, um, so it's like yes, tw twenty quid, and you've got this like incredible development environment, and yeah, I think six hundred megahertz is plenty to run. Let's say something like the Gong thing, or a reverb algorithm, or um, pro probably pretty pretty punchy like uh, you know fast Fourier transform stuff, or yeah, physical modeling. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, entire games uh, used to to run on six hundred megahertz. Uh, yeah, 20 years yeah, exactly. Ago. And it, like, I mean, the, the thing with chips now are like they have so many optimizations. Um, you know, to to do things, you know, certain um, algorithms faster, like adding lots of numbers all at the same time rather than doing them one at a time. But the thing with Teensy is it doesn't have an operating system, so it's got so much less to do. Um, it basically runs directly on, you know, on the hardware rather than sort of being scheduled with the operating system and being sort of booted off because the computer needs to defrag a hard drive or whatever. I guess I don't know if they do those anymore. <laughs> we have a question from, uh, from Nella on YouTube. We'll say they're lower, by the way. Could you route audio output of Cola Sampler to another app? Um, yeah, like basically, there's a, a technology that's also on its on its way out um, uh, called um, Interrap Audio, which is it's something that Apple made. Um, and there's there's a bunch of programs that let you um, uh, you can route other programs uh, that use uh, Interrap Audio um, 
Yeah, but the the program you're routing it to needs to also support it, basically. So, um, and you'd usually use it in like a host program. So there's one called AUM, which is really popular and really good. And then there's another one called um, uh, Audio Bus, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, th there's the new plugin format, but Koala doesn't support that yet. So um, right. it's coming. And I tell you a question to, to go back to the TNC. Uh, it was uh, seemed surprised that you'd be using an analog output of the Teensy for that. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the new Teensy board has got this this feature called like medium quality audio pin. So obviously not high quality, uh, but it sounds pretty good. Like that demo, you can't really tell because it sounds really eight bit. But um, uh, it's supposed to be sixteen bit, um, even though it's. I don't really understand it. It's not a proper deck, uh, so I don't know what that means but it, it sounds okay and and you can like i said I, the board that i've built it uses like um a very uh sort of standard 24-bit uh codec and i think you can get those on a little board for like 13 13 quid or something like that so hope that answers it yeah uh, I guess it does. So uh, Dan Jones had uh, another question for you about the development of Koala and the audio DSP framework. Any design decision you would rethink if you did all from scratch? Yeah, if I if I sort of redid it, um, I was thinking this today. Like, uh, I don't know if I should have done it in the first place. Like, uh, it, it's definitely a lot a lot to um, uh, to bite off and chew. Um, I think I maybe would have made the the graphics framework a little bit more um, agnostic to what it's running on. Um, there's there's a thing called um, like a library called BGFX that I'm quite interested in. Basically, using that to replace the the graphics framework because you can use it in a way, um, you know, basically run things on a GPU um, in a slightly higher higher level. So it will interpret stuff into um, whatever platform you're running it on. Um, th there's also a way of basically writing shaders for one kind of video card and kind of porting it um, or tra trans uh, transcoding it into another format. So like OpenGL to Met or or like Vulkan or whatever. Um, I think I would like that's um, yeah that's a big thing. I'd say like the framework that I've got doesn't have. A huge amount of DSP. There's a folder with like you know nice interpolating delays and filters and um, what's it called? You know like sort of resampling stuff. I, I'm not a massive um, DSP head, although um, yeah, I, I I am working on something at the moment which which uses um what is it called like W Solar? So it's like um, a synchronized overlap it's like a a nice pitch shifter for um time stretching things as long as it's quite melodic and that that works really well for the project and it sounds amazing and it's only like sort of 15 lines of code or something so that that was really exciting to accidentally sort of program it um sort of half copying pacing off the internet and um uh and then it worked and i was like whoa that sounds amazing um, and th I guess that sort of comes from uh, being able to test things out very quickly with the with the live coding uh, setup that I got. Yeah. Cool. And um, do you have some uh, well some experience to share about you know all of these different disciplines that that you've uh, you've come across? Would it be hardware, programming, design? Uh, it's very hard to scale. Like, if you want to surround yourself uh, and build products at a larger scale with others, it's, it's kind of a difficult step because you have to um, you have an expertise that uh, others might not have. Or like, dividing the, the work, which mm. happens in big teams like Apple, you would divide the work and it's more siloed yeah. and you do just one thing. Uh, are, are you thinking for yourself of, of growing the Marek Bereza brand of products and, and, and getting, uh, getting more people. Is there any music hackers out there that you would like to invite to, um, to work with you? Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want it to be the Marek Bereza brand, but like, uh, um, I would like to sort of grow something, but I just sort of hit, hit the brick wall of like, um, 
uh, you, if it's if it's about paying people, you've got to sort of guarantee that they can get paid, um, which is uh, yeah. I, maybe I'm just not um, uh, I'm a bit risk averse in in that sense. But it's sort of getting to the point where where it would be cool to to bring some people on, and I think um, it would be more interesting to bring on. Um, some sort of uh, wacky people with with unusual skill sets. Maybe not. I mean, I don't feel like I can kind of give away the the sort of uh, DSP programming stuff. But like one thing I've been thinking quite quite a lot about. Maybe Ollie knows about this a bit. Um, just the idea of in in the way of making music software, trying trying to make an easier system for doing the UI that's still flexible enough. Um, but like, let's say if it was you know, um, web-based sort of setup, you know, like, so the, the back end of the DSP is C++, but maybe a web developer, I mean, a, you know, front end UI website designer type person could do the front end. I, I think something like Koala, there's so much like interdependencies, which is like, this is a really bad thing in programming. Generally, you want to like decouple everything as much as possible. Um, but just to make, everything sort of fun and smooth it's been really difficult to like um separate those two things and then that makes it really difficult to you know get someone just to do some uh ui programming it's like it's a bit bit in into interwoven um because it just make it makes it a little bit more fun um but i think that would be cool if i could get to a point where you know because then i guess it's it's difficult to have someone who's a designer and a programmer, but then you, it's quite easy to get a designer and musician or designer who can do a bit of programming, um, you know, that, that sort of realm. So, yeah, making the problem a little bit easier. If I can make that problem a bit easier, then maybe that's a, a good thing. Like, maybe that would be my starting point. Right, right. Well, a completely different question from Nella. Uh, and, and, but I think that's very relevant about, uh, today's world of, uh, expressing ourselves much more through online means. We did struggle about, uh, audio routing, but it's, it's complex. We, we all use different machines and, and, uh, and systems. Um, and yes, we are, we are using black hole. I mean, I think Marek and I are using black hole, which is free and it works on a Mac. It doesn't work on windows. Loopback is. Uh, is, is, is not free, it's actually quite expensive, it's probably a hundred pounds, but um, uh, you can try it for free, it's pretty good, and Atto used it for, for his uh, talk, uh, which, was, which was fantastic. So, you know, sometimes it can be worth investing. I don't have a, I don't have a, a strong feeling about that. I don't, I don't know what, what your exploration was like, Marek, about that. Um, I think if, um, if I bothered to, to test whether the live coding thing would work with this, um, I'd probably end up just plugging in another computer. I, I've got one more computer, um, and then just like putting it for a you know mixer, uh, and keeping it analog. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I use um, I usually use Soundflower, which is like the old one. Um, uh, it was quite funny to find that even though it's like sort of very badly supported in Apple, like um, oh yeah. Um, hmm. I'm sure I'm okay to say this. Like they they use Soundflower a lot to test their their sort of uh, software and stuff like that because it's like the only thing. It's kind of weird that they just don't make one and and uh, give it away to everyone. And you know, like I think all of these these things, Black Hole and um, and Soundflower, they're all sort of trying to um, circumvent things that are going on in the operating system. And and um, uh, you know, if the people who made the operating system made a nice one. That would be pretty good. Yeah, which was really the case for Interrap Audio. I mean, Interrap Audio was built after uh, Audio Bus was very, very successful. Yeah, and it, yeah. it took a few years before um, Apple caught up and, and built Interrap yeah. Audio or but released then, it. Yeah, that's canned now. It's, it's. Um, I think basically, it, um, it started, as I understand it, getting buggier and buggier. Uh, and uh, causing more and more trouble on different devices because they're not sort of actively um, keeping an eye on it, as I understand it. Um, I mean, they, I think also they just really want to push the the plugin. Or do you need to be three? Yeah, yes. yeah. 
Yeah, which um, yeah, which yeah. allows a lot of the diff uh, similar things. And if if people are not familiar with the unit V three, it's it's very interesting. An app can be built. An app on the iOS uh, for iOS can be built inside with engines that are effectively plugins, and these plugins can be hosted in in host application that can read that. So. Uh, I understand, Koala itself, you are working on a, a UV3 version? Yeah, I'm just um, I'm making a version of the effects. So uh, th there's 16 effects built into Koala, or 24, but I'm only doing the 16. Uh, so I'm making a AUV3, um, and with very little modification, it runs, it runs on the Mac as well, but only in uh, Logic, I think. I think that's the only, only people who like support it properly. And even then, they don't. Um, there's a few bugs in the implementation of the the host in in Logic. I think it's really it's really strange. Yeah, um, there's the very big limitations such as the you know the the real estate how, how they look, uh, yeah, yeah. The, how much memory they take, etc. Oh yeah, yeah, three hundred megabytes or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's pretty strange. But for effects, I think it's fine because you you don't, you don't need much memory for, for mm -hmm, effects. Mm -hmm. We're getting pretty technical here. Martin Ross has a comment that's also uh, actually goes over my head. I'm not sure what he, uh, whatever that means, but um, HTC <laughs> mandates all sort of control over. It's pretty... Do you understand what that means, Marek? N no, I don't know what HDC, HDPs. No, I don't know. Don't know. All right. Well, we would have to know. Google that and and get back to you, Martin. But I, I guess <laughs> it was a comment rather than a question. Um, but uh, yeah, so, well, great to have you today. Uh, and uh, I, I don't see much more questions coming from the live stream, mm -hmm. but uh, we're happy to, to, to hang on a little longer if, if there's any that, that pop up. And um, yeah, maybe a question that I ask to, to everybody that joins the channel uh, is, is what kind of advice do you have for, for aspiring developers, people who are maybe students now and, and, and want to find the path that will lead them to to a career where they can do something they love and work work to, to mm -hmm. build products and then apply their creativity like, like you do every day. I mean, you're in control of how you channel your creativity in your into your own mm. products. And, and I think a lot of people would aspire to that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's no recipe for you, your own uh, success. But, sure, but uh, sure. if you have advice, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like, um... The biggest thing that I see that just like really, really is quite sad is like pe people often like I guess get bogged down in the the technical side of things and don't don't concentrate on you know the the fact that maybe they're making a musical instrument and and you know the the fact that they're sort of like making some like a tool for someone else to express something. I mean, if that's you know some music hackers are making instruments for themselves some some people are making it for other people but if you're making something for other people it's um you know like it's sort of paramount that that, that you make it sort of usable and and really try and sort of consider how someone would feel when when they use it um and yeah sort of concentrating on the design and like base like w one really good rule is like if you if you design something and you, you put something in there and there's no reason for it or you can't justify it then and just take it out, you know, um, uh, boil it down and, and like uh, try not to make too much sort of cognitive load for the user when they're trying to trying to just uh, get in the flow of things, unless you want them to have cognitive load. Um, I know they call it sort of friction in, in uh, UI design or whatever. But um, yeah, I think just trying to concentrate on on how people use it rather than the sort of technical details, I think like i don't know all the stuff that i do is like um probably like really bad quality audio wise it's like loads of aliasing or there's like you know uh, all sorts of ter terrible um audio artifacts but i think because it's like it's quite fun it just doesn't doesn't really matter and i think well maybe people's ears have kind of adapted to to enjoying these sort of like bad programming mistakes uh, in audio i mean I, I think it sounds fine i don't give i don't really care so and and i think you, you called them earlier happy accidents mm -hmm. you know that, that can contribute to it as well it, it's it's a it's a feature maybe rather than a bug if you don't have yeah yeah perfect exactly. sound yeah exactly well that makes sense i mean I, I would love to have uh you teaching workshops or you know coming to 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 share mm -hmm. some things you do about the teensy because i i think that it's a very affordable path into designing 
hardware objects and, and programming them. And, and uh, if I understand correctly, the tool chain for it is free as well. Yeah, yeah, that's all free. I mean, to turn it into a product, I know it's like um, not so straightforward because there's, there's, uh, it is open source, but there's, it's a little bit complicated with the licensing. But to prototype something, to, to evaluate whether it's worth making something, it's perfect. You know, like uh, if, if you can make a, you can make a very high level prototype with a teensy to the point where you're like, okay, uh, you, you can sell it to a, you know, an investor who can give you the money you need to like, you know, turn it into a product if they're convinced that you can actually do the rest of it. But um, yeah, as a platform, you know, it's, it's amazing and it's so small as well. So it's really good. Yeah. It's really easy to, to embed into, into a larger design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, well, I think I think uh, we can we come close to to uh, time to say uh, say goodbye. But uh, uh, thanks so much. I, I no hope problem. we can see one day a presentation of the live demo. Um, <laughs> oh, and, uh, I know it was a last minute thing for you, so you know don't worry about uh, about it. Yeah. But it's just great to, to see to see the career and then the path that you, you, you've had. Um, and and Cola's doing really well. I think uh, on Android, it's also um, one of the few apps that that on the music side that mm -hmm. allows people mm -hmm. to be creative and it's, it's kind of a challenge i know mm -hmm. uh, so so congrats on that um so yeah just just a few words to finish from me we have uh, oli larkin as i mentioned earlier oli the developer of iplug2 who is going to be talking about iplug2 on thursday and it's, it's going to be the last talk before september 7th uh, so we're taking a break and uh, come stronger in, in september with more talks um any last words from you marek no that's it or just sorry about the drum machine thing i uh, maybe uh, i'll put it on the internet at some point um it's quite fun great well let us know when you do and, and the forum a uh, music based forum is always uh, a good oh, place also, to yeah. share thanks for having me oh you're welcome thank you so much for joining thanks everyone bye bye everybody cool catch you later <laughs>